All right, guys. I got some task force to do. Task force another day. Now this is this is I believe early chess repeat. I'm scared, man. I'm always scared to do these damn chess repeat reactions, man. In task force, I think you guys said he might have done it with his brother and a few other guys. I'm not sure, man, but <sighs> let's get right into it. Guys, this is going to be a deep one. All right. Okay, here we're here for it, man. For Afghanistan, along with every Muslim, because he thinks they're all the Taliban. While from a mountain home, another child without a name is waiting for a father with some food and neither ever came. Her father died from a bullet wound a mile away. He died without a weapon while the guilty fled to hiding caves. It's just another life, sadly, it's another day that left a little girl with only martyrdom to pave her way. She grew with clerics filled with hate. I don't think I've ever heard Chester P. tell a story, and I gotta say, this is one of the better uh, hip hop storytelling tracks I've heard so far. And I, I'm a minute in. I can kind of see where he might be going with this, but but let's let's keep going. Hatred is her ruling guide and trained her in explosives for a homicidal suicide. I'm gonna go back uh, ten seconds. It's another day that left a little girl with only martyrdom to pave her way. She grew with clerics filled with hatred as her ruling guide and trained her in explosives for a homicidal suicide. There is no moral to a story that was bred at war, and all there is to say, I'm sure, at some points we've been said before. It's just another life, sadly, just another day, and sadder still, another just the same is never far away. It's just another life, and sadly, just another day, and sadder still, another just the same is never far away. We live, we die. So, uh, so he's essentially saying it's just another day and, and another person who's the same as another person far away, uh, more or less. I know that's not exactly, I know you guys are going to get, not all of you, but so, some of you guys get in the comments like, well, technically he said a and not a, ah. it's like, whatever, dude. Um, yeah, interesting concept, man. Um, certainly an interesting concept i mean i mean right now with the whole israel hamas thing going on it's like war war is war is an, a tricky thing man because it's like i won't i won't get too much into it but it is an interesting fact that like the people like if if let's just play a game u.s goes to war with sudan for whatever reason um if if you were Sudanese, I think that's what what they're called. If you're from Sudan and you find out the U.S. is going to war, and let's just say the U.S. did a drone strike on a village, and let's say you're a 15 year old boy and your family got killed, um, what like wouldn't it just be the rational thing to join the army and defend your your country? Um, and, and an interesting thing, like he's talking about the, the, the stories of like the, the brother, the brother died in Afghanistan and then over in the mountains in Afghanistan, you know, that, that guy's dad died, you know, it's like, it's, it's a, it's a primitive thing that it, it's, it's the really, I don't know that there's a solution for it unless if we could shut off the, uh, <laughs> Like the the primal part of human beings, which I, I think there would be other implications that would be dangerous to that as well. But I, I, war is an un, unfortunate uh, reality of human history, and uh, this isn't a new thing. I mean, if you think about the the, I mean, World War Two kind of it at least enlightened enough people to understand like oh so like we could wipe out like we have weapons that are powerful enough to wipe out every human on the planet like if we all went to war with each other um you know we we could probably wipe everyone out um 
and even more so now. But look, I won't talk too much about it. Let's keep get. Let's keep going here. That's life, I guess. This war, famine, pain, and death. This them, this us, this you, this me. We live, we die, we rarely free. But love exists and strength in mind, and all good things will come with time. So raise your fist and sing with me. I'm God. I'm strong. I'm proud. I'm free. Welcome to the other side Happiness and lullabies Where people cast their sleepy eyes Focused on the world outside Overlooking power struggles that are here inside And constantly remain in self-denial As their world divides Now Patrick visits dad at the cemetery Who was killed as he was marching through the town of Derry The generations of his family have also suffered Another loss of bloody Sunday that they won't recover All this dying for religion and his politics has said bloody Sunday? Is that... I want to say that's that's something that you guys are gonna rip me to shreds, and I totally deserve it. Um, Bloody Sunday happened in Ireland. You guys cue me in. I I I don't know. I'm I'm an ignorant, dumb American. Okay, I know. Uh, you guys cue me in, but uh, look, I'm gonna go back and catch that reference. Now Patrick visits dad at the cemetery. Was killed as he was marching through the town of Derry. The generations of his family have also suffered. Another loss of bloody Sunday that they won't recover. All this dying for religion and his politics as Patrick at the bar getting drunk singing. Fuck the English. But somewhere in a London estate, Terry hates the Irish and thinks they all support the IRA. Cause back in 92, his little sister passed away. A bomb inside a van and took her life and he can't take the pain. He wants to die and take her place, but he knows he can't. And now he's filled with hate and loves to fight, given any chance. And neither families from two different nations related by their grief pain and frustrations wow so I, at least i was right about bloody sunday um but i mean he, he yeah so it, it sounds like he's he's essentially saying these are people from two different nations that are essentially the same in in their grief of their loved ones um and he i mean he mentions you know not all irish people support the the ira it's like well not all afghans support the taliban not all uh, like there there's i i'm not guys don't i'm not conflating the ira with the taliban i don't know anything about the ira other than it's called the irish republican army and that they resisted the british or something so i don't i'm not conflating the two but i am saying like it's like not every American supports whoever's president. In fact, most like, in fact, most Americans don't ever fully support a president because they suck um, because they're a terrible representation of who the people here actually are. And sometimes it's accurate, but I won't get too much into that. But he's essentially saying they sh they're the same and that they share the same grief for their, their family and their loved ones in that. The one, the one kid he was talking about, um, who I want to say he said he lost his sister in a bombing. Um, he, you know, he fights at any chance. Like he's he's in in pain and he's grieving. And a lot of people, you know, some people internalize their pain and their grief, and some people externalize it to the point where they'll live recklessly. Um, and ne neither is good. Uh, the just the main difference is is that not only are you willing to do damage to yourself if you a lash out externally, but you're also potentially willing to do damage to others. But it's not like there's it's not like it's one or the other. Like there's a very it, it's a very complex situation. Grief, but um, let's keep going. Related by the grief, pain, and frustrations. It's always hard to heal the wounds that were caused by war when it's difficult to understand what we're fighting for. Just another life, sadly just another day Inside us still another, just the same, it's never far away It's just another life, and sadly just another day Inside us still another, just the same, it's never far away We live, we die, that's life, I guess There's war, famine, pain, and death There's them, there's us, there's you, there's me We live, we die, we're rarely free But love exists, and strength in mind And all good things will come with time so raise your fist and sing with me I'm God, I'm strong, I'm proud, I'm free Interesting, man It's interesting that he, he um, brings it around to we're free um, Even in the hook, you know, at the end of it he says You know, he talks about these, these horrific things of, of famine and war and death And then he says we're free um, I really don't know what to make of that 
that's really interesting. Um, interesting way to 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 kind of sum that up. Um, yeah, I mean, death gets all of us. Like, we're not none of us are permanent. And if you look at the universe in in terms of how long the universe has apparently been around and the uncertain future, I mean, one single human's existence is um incredibly inconsequential and so it's it, it becomes a matter of like well what do you want to do with with your it can be uh incredibly like paralyzing and crippling but at the same time to some people it's also freeing to know like oh so like the the like what it, for me i look at it like oh well what am i going to do with my time here then like am i gonna waste it am i gonna just pursue pleasure am i gonna try to build a business am i gonna try to like make make other humans better do i want to be remembered like there's all these different questions you can ask yourself and some people take the opposite approach is like oh well then everything's meaningless nothing matters they, they, so it's there's always some kind of a duality within most of us where where depending on where you're at in life, whether or not you've overcome some trauma um, or, or have figured out a way to live with it and, and cope with it, or whether whether you're completely still kind of in that mentality, um, a, a lot of people respond differently to that, um, that idea. But it's definitely a fact that we, we're all going to die. Um, I mean, the, the, uh, we have a primal instinct. Like, violence is a very natural thing to human beings. Um and, you know, it's, it's appalling because uh, oftentimes in a lot of um, Western cultures, it, we, we do like kind of live in these sheltered environments and like um, it, it can be appalling. And now it's, it's very interesting with I had someone tell me once um, the only <laughs> it used to be the only people who saw the violence of war were the people who were there. Um. And now it's an interesting social uh, experiment almost to have social media uh, depict horrific violence that typically only the people who were there doing it and the people who were victims of it and maybe some children who witnessed it uh, who they didn't kill. Th those used to be the only people who really witnessed it. And then if you weren't in front of it, you wouldn't really know about it or you wouldn't be impacted by it and now it can be filmed and broadcasted throughout the entirety of the world and you can see the horrific violence that humans commit against each other um it's definitely an interest i don't know that it's better or worse for a society i mean it's definitely i don't think good that like a 12 year old can watch a, a murder like an a full-on actual murder like I, I don't think that's good um, but certainly over the course of, of time, we'll see how that kind of affects us. I won't bang on too much here, guys, even though I already have. Uh, you guys take care, stay safe, and take care of your loved ones wherever you're watching the video from.